In this video, we're going to discuss setting up traditional, dynamic, and adaptive QoS on your wireless router. QoS stands for Quality of Service. Your router uses QoS to give you the ability to prioritize certain types of traffic or specific devices over everyone else on the network in order to keep your favorite games and TV shows from lagging or being interrupted by someone else's activity on the network. There are different ways to implement QoS, depending on which manufacturer's router you got. Sometimes QoS is so simple a child can do it, and other times it's such a pain you wonder if it's even worth the bother. I would avoid the word traditional QoS and stick to either dynamic or adaptive QoS when shopping for a wireless router. So just to get it out of the way, I'm going to cover traditional QoS first. So as an example of how painful traditional QoS can be, let's take a look at this ASUS router. On the ASUS, QoS is called Traffic Manager. And it's not enabled by default. If you want to use QoS, you basically just turn it on and some more stuff appears down here but it's still not on yet until you click apply okay so let's go back to traffic manager and see what's going on in order to prioritize my bandwidth the wireless router needs to know how much bandwidth I have and I get that by going to speedtest.net and my download is 107 my upload is 10 so I'm just going to say 107 by 11 my upload is 11 and my download is 107 click apply so the way traditional QoS works is you use manually configured user-defined rules. Okay, now this particular wireless router will have some pre-configured things in here that you can use right away, such as Windows Live, HTTPS, WebSurf, all that stuff is in here. And then they'll have some games. This list is kind of dated. But just to show you how this works, basically what you would do is you go, oh, okay, I want to play Diablo 3. Select that. And then you would pick the IP address or the MAC address of the machine on your network that you want to play it on. So you would say, okay, this one here. And then it automatically fills in the destination ports. Okay, so what this is saying is on this computer, we're going to play Diablo 3 and we're going to open up these ports and we're going to give that the highest priority. And then we simply add it and then click apply. To make sure your new rule has the highest priority, you can simply go in here and give these other protocols different priorities. So now what may be going on in the back of your mind is, hey, what if my game is not on this stupid list? It probably isn't. So then here comes the fun part. What you can do is you can go to this website called port4.com and you can find just about every game out there. So you just keep on going until you find your game. And let's say we want to play Halo. Now in this case we have 374 TCP. So what we would do is we would go Halo TCP. Pick our MAC address and put the destination port for TCP in there. Add it. And then we would go Halo 
UDP, pick the destination computer, get our ports for UDP, put them in there, and add it. So now you've got Halo being allowed over these ports to this device. And of course you want to give them the highest priority. And since we like Halo better than we like Diablo 3, we just give that high. And that doesn't really matter because you're going to be playing everything off of this computer anyway. So there's a good example of traditional QoS. Not the kind of thing I would want to do every day. So now we're going to go to the opposite side of the spectrum and talk about dynamic QoS. To demonstrate dynamic QoS, I'm going to be using the Netgear router. To configure dynamic QoS on this router, we simply go to dynamic QoS. Now, as usual, it's not enabled by default. So we basically have to just enable it. Once the router reboots, we're ready to configure QoS. Like other routers, this one wants to know what our bandwidth is. This particular router has a little utility to test our speed built in. Now the other two routers we're actually using this router as their internet connection so this one will probably be a little bit faster than the other ones because of that additional hop. Okay, If the router you're on offers the option to automatically update the performance database I would go ahead and check that. Most wireless router manufacturers have an online database that the wireless router can use to sort out priorities of various devices and various protocols. As I said, this is all done automatically for you. Yes, this is mostly automatic, but there, there are some little things that you can do, such as you can assign priorities to certain devices. For example, if you don't care too much about Dude's PC, you can simply edit, edit its priority, and give it, say, low. and give something that you actually care about such as this NAS device a high priority. So the way dynamic QoS works is it basically has a database of different types of protocols, different types of services, different types of devices and it kind of just figures out which kinds of devices or which protocols need the highest priority. It kind of makes the decisions for you. It will automatically assign a video game priority over file transfers. Well, that's basically it for dynamic QoS. So now let's talk about adaptive QoS. Like I said earlier, adaptive QoS kind of hits the sweet spot between the pain of traditional QoS and the absolute ease of dynamic QoS. With adaptive QoS we can decide for ourselves what devices and what applications we want to give priority. But instead of having to look up port numbers and copy and paste things into an ugly interface, we get to use a simple drag and drop interface to easily select which protocols we want to have priority and which ones we don't want to have priority. QoS is one of those buzzwords that gets bounced around a lot by people who like to sound smart. The fact of the matter is, is QoS is not something you really need if you only have a few devices or a few people on your network at the same time. You really only need QoS if you have a lot of devices competing for network bandwidth 
and a few specific machines such as TVs and game consoles that need special attention. You can drive yourself crazy constantly tweaking your QoS settings, trying to get it just right, because the conditions on your network are always changing. And that magical sweet spot where everything is just perfect is constantly moving. So my basic rule of thumb when it comes to QoS is QoS is a great thing to have if you need it, but if you don't need it, don't pull your hair out over it.